What's up YouTube? This is Tractor X64 and this is episode one of our Kerbal Space Program uh, Let's Play series. Uh, this episode we're going to be flying to our space station. I already have a space station in orbit around Kerbin. It's basically this mission. The purpose of this mission is to fly a capsule up that can carry men up and also switch around the crew and return three more Kerbals back to Earth because they've been up there for quite some time. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to start out by going into the current space station just to show it. Uh, you can see it here. It's nothing amazing. Just so you know. It's not great. I'm not a pro expert at this game. But it's uh, decent. It gets the job done. I kind of just did it for fun, though. There isn't actually any... Uh, tru truthfully, there really isn't much usefulness to it, other than it's pretty cool and fun to dock with and whatnot. But in the future, I plan to add a uh, refueling module to it. And for long, like really long missions, maybe Duna, maybe not necessary for Duna, but longer ones like uh, Elu or whatever that's pronounced, I don't know. Um, I'll probably just add some more modules. Uh, but for now, we're just going to uh, play around with the, uh, well, we're just going to dock with it. By the way, um, this video isn't a tutorial on how to dock with things in orbit. I uh, I mean, I'm not, I know how to do it, but I'm not exactly an expert at it that I would probably be a good teacher for it. I mean, I know how to do it, but I don't really understand the, uh, like I know how to do it, but I'm not even, I don't really know what I'm doing exactly, if that makes sense. But eventually when I feel comfortable with that, or if you guys, want a tutorial, and if you do want a tutorial on how to dock in orbit, please comment that in the comment section. Um, but I'll probably put a tutorial up. So we're going to go ahead and go into the rocket that we're going to use here. It is a uh, nothing too complex, but at the same time it's nothing too simple it, uh, as well because I am using asparagus staging, and you'll see how that works. Um, if I pull that main lifting stage down, you can see the actual module that we're going uh, that will dock. Um, on the top, it has a protected docking port, and uh, I'm not going to waste any time here. I'm just going to go ahead and go into the launch. Uh, let's see. I actually have to. There we go. Okay, I have to go into map mode here. And what's going on? There we go. Okay. So we're in map mode. And I'm going to align the uh, space station. I mean, like I said, it's not a tutorial, but I'll talk about it a little bit, I guess. Uh, you can see the space station. I want to launch in day, so that's why I did that. And I'm going to align it right about there. Um, it doesn't really have to be super precise. I mean, I'll talk about that later in a tutorial, but just for, I'm just going to try this. And let's go ahead and launch. I'm not going to waste any time. Turn on SAS, throttle up. And we're off. Uh, I have some action command or uh, action groups on this as well uh, one of which is to lock vector in whoops what did oh it overheated that was a complete failure on my part I got distracted by a text message and that's why I should never ever text and fly your rockets. It's dangerous. You can die. No text or ah crap.
crap, never mind, I forget the saying. Anyway, let's go ahead and realign this. This time, I will remember to throttle down. And by the way, I think I may have mentioned it in a previous video, that if you put those uh, small gray tanks on the bottom and then the engines, it'll allow you to throttle, full throttle, and not overheat. And I did that at first, and I, te I tested this rocket like four or five times before I made the video, and uh, for some reason when I used those gray tanks, no matter what I did, I put tons of struts and whatnot, and they just, about 8,000 feet up, they just, they just all like flew apart, and the entire thing disintegrated. So I took them off and it solved the problem, so I figured I might as well just deal with the overheating issue, which isn't hard to fix. You just throttle down a little bit and it won't overheat. So you can see the asparagus staging, the two of the big engines are going to run out of fuel. And I, I don't, I can't really explain asparagus staging. Maybe I'll show it later. Um, I, it basically the tanks empty into each other and you'll see what happens when I jettison these tanks here. So now that I jettison those, the three remaining tanks are full. So let's just keep flying up. And when we hit as usual, for almost any orbit I get myself into, I will turn it around 10,000 feet. And I'm just gonna turn 90 degrees, 45 degrees, and lock it in with SAS. Just a simple maneuver. This is kind of my uh, go-to orbital maneuver. Also, uh, I forgot to mention the action uh, groups I have. One of the first one is to lock the vectoring on the outer engines, which I didn't use because it seemed pretty stable. Whoops, bump the uh, uh, four key. So basically, it was pretty stable, so I figured I might as well just leave it be. Um, uh, the next one I have, I think, activates the communitrons or whatever, the little satellite dishes. That I'm not sure if they have any usefulness, I just kind of, more of an aesthetic thing for me. Uh, three activates these uh, satellite panels. Again, they probably won't be a, like that useful, kind of an aesthetic thing. If I had put lights on it, maybe it would have been useful, um, but I forgot to. And four, as I accidentally bumped earlier, activates the shield on the docking port on the tip of the module. So those two outer tanks, and please don't hit. Yes, okay, we are clear. Even though I have tested this rocket getting into orbit many times just to make sure it works, and every time I jettison those, I worry that it's gonna nick the bottom and just destroy everything. But it didn't, so let's keep flying up. I'm going to, uh, I'm not gonna get too detailed about docking procedure but basically what I'm trying to do here is since the space station is ahead of me I need to get myself into an orbit just below it and what this means I think uh, the altitude of the space station should be hovering around 200,000 that's where I tried to get it, it might be a little more or give or take a few thousand let's see two or two so I'm going to get myself into an orbit of uh, 198-ish, and my orbit will be below the orbit of the space station, which means that I will be traveling around the Earth faster, which means that I will be able to catch up with the space station, and I can adjust my orbit to help me get into uh, intersects or encounters, I guess, with the uh, space station, which you can very easily do um, by tar uh, setting your whatever you're trying to mo uh, dock with as a target, which I'm going to do, and this will help a lot with everything.
So I'm going to start out by, I'm going to add a maneuver on the apoapsis there, as you normally would. And I'm going to set that as a target, and you'll see when I bring this out. Whoops, there we go. A little too far. You see those red arrow looking things? Uh, I can tweak it so they get closer and closer, and I, my, my intersect is around 5 kilometers. Um, so that's pretty close. I might, once I, I'm going to get into this orbit and then I might tweak it later on because I probably won't be able to get in that orbit perfectly, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to turn on RCS thrusters, which I have plenty of fuel for with that big RCS tank because this is a very large and bulky ship to maneuver. I'm, I could jettison that big tank and just use my smaller tank, but I figured I still have the fuel so I might as well use it up for a simple maneuver here, even though it's incredibly annoying to maneuver these things. So let's get lined up with our node here and lock in SAS. Wait, a little bit closer. Alright, speed up time a little bit. Hopefully not go over. And we're almost there. A little over a minute. I'm going to burn, I'm going to start this burn a little bit earlier, and it, uh, I'm not really sure if this is going to do anything at all, but I'm hoping that'll sort of, I uh, probably won't do much, kind of even out the orbit, because if I start it right at the node, I might get a little bit ahead of the maneuver, causing the orbit to be a little bit off than what I wanted it, uh, intended it to be, but I don't know, probably nothing major. Let's just see what becomes of our orbit here. And we'll cut off the engine right about now. Okay, so we're on track for a pretty good intersect. That's actually better than I thought it was going to be, but I'm going to add a maneuver. Maybe I can tweak it a little bit so it's closer. I mean, I could. If I wanted to, I could be perfectly fine and content with that uh, uh, intersect there. I could be able to get to it, but just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to see if I can tweak it a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to have enough time. If I made the maneuver too soon. Maybe I can. This darn ship wasn't so bulky. It's ridiculous. We still want to use up that last little bit of fuel, even though it's really annoying to have to steer this thing around. Oh, I just completely did it the wrong way. Man. It's, it's not giving me a, um, you can see there, I already went over at the time, but the estimated burn, and I kind of screwed up here, darn, would I do that? Shoot. And I'll fix that. The it, it wasn't giving me an estimate because that tw that tweak was so small. It it would have taken barely anything. It was 1.1 I think meters per second. That's hardly anything. And it would just tap the throttle and then cut it off should have been enough. So let's see if I can make a maneuver a little bit later. I can give myself more time. Yeah, I have more. I should be able to get it in a few minutes here. So I'll just steer the ship around once more. And there we go. It's jittering around quite a bit. Oh well, just roughly uh, line myself up with it. Uh, warp time just a little bit. Let's 
get within a few seconds here. And you can see that that burn is going to be incredibly uh, short and sweet. I'm not even going to use full throttle. Because if I, by the time I get it up to full throttle, I'll already have gone way over the uh, speed I'm trying to change here. And you see on that bar on the right, that meter, that helps you with your node. What that means is uh, that whatever number that is, is how much you need to change your current velocity f to acquire whatever maneuver you're trying to achieve. And because that number's so low, I barely need anything. And there we go. Went a little bit over, but we are that's I'm fine with that intersect. We can work with that. And the reason I didn't uh, start the series with uh, the space station from scratch is mostly because I was when I started the space station, I had no idea how to dock whatsoever. And by building the space station, I kind of mastered that process and it was my learning experience and if I had tried the made that a let's play series it would have been hours and hours of me failing and trying to figure out how to dock so now that I have it figured out I'll start from here and I haven't done too much so well let's uh, quick save warp all the way around you can see because of my lower orbit, I'm actually catching up to the space station. And I'm getting very close to it. Really, really close. Probably almost close enough to make visual contact with it. And now I have my nice small maneuverable module here and we can see So now I am burning retrograde because what I'm trying to do here is uh, gnaw out my speed relative to the space station. So basically, I'm kind of just, and you can, when it, that, uh, lost my train of thought, okay. So you can see how it says target, and then it gives you a number in meters per second. That is your speed relative to your target. And I'm going to try to null that out to almost zero, I guess. I'm fine with a little over one. And let's, now I'm going to that pink symbol that I'm aimed at. That, rep, that is essential. That is uh, the space station. I have it as a target. So if I'm aimed towards that, I am aimed towards the station. So I'm going to burn uh, a little bit, get going a little bit fast. Not too fast, maybe, depending how far away you are, maybe 20 to 30-ish meters per second. I'm going to lock into the retrograde position so when I approach it, I can slow down. I'll warp time a little bit, getting closer. You can actually make visual contact with our space station. And a little bit more. Just get a little bit closer, and I'm getting fairly close. I'll start gnawing out my speed. And now comes, now that I'm close to it, we are about to embark on what is, in my opinion, the absolute trickiest part of docking, which is essentially the close approach in the actual docking itself. It's very, very tricky, and it just takes a lot of practice, trial and error and whatnot. And I fully, I did, like I said before, I don't fully understand this process. I just kind of figure it out as I go and get my bearings and do it, and somehow it works. I don't understand it enough to be able to say exactly what I'm doing, which is why I'm not doing a tutorial right now. I'm just kind of playing the game really and sharing it with everybody so let's see if I can 
basically now that I've nulled my speed I've done the same thing I did before I just burned towards it and uh, I've faced a retrograde so I can uh, stop myself relative to the space station and when I say stop and go I'm pretty much saying relative to the station obviously we're not stopped Let's see if I can move, stop myself here. Oh, I see what I've done wrong here. I need to Burn retrograde for myself, not relative to the station. And that should stop me. Or close close to stop me anyway. And whatever, I'll I'll go with that. As you can tell I'm not using a tremendous amount of precision, I'm just kind of uh doing it on the fly. And uh, hopefully I can get this. I'm trying to dock with the exact op I mean exact opposite of the two smaller capsules that you may have noticed earlier. Um, that's where I'm going to try to dock. If I if I just end up flying towards a different part of it, whatever I, I mean, I'll just kind of dock wherever there's a port. There's I, there's tons of ports on it right now. Almost every uh ship has at least, every capsule has at least, um, at least one, maybe, I think on the bottom of each one there is a, uh, one port at least, and then there's those uh, multiple directional ones in the middle, and that's where I'm trying to dock, just for uh, mostly aesthetic purposes, so it looks kind of uh, even, so I'm getting closer, I'm really tempted to use a uh, warp time but probably wouldn't be a good idea might overshoot it and go completely the wrong direction I'm gonna see if I can huh. I'm not really sure what I've done but I'm also tempted to just like screw the nav ball and just like figure it out myself and just kind of fly towards it. But I know that will never work. I'll lose my bearings and just completely lose it. Let's see if I can get back on track here. Oh man, why'd I do that? May take may take a minute, but I shall figure this out. Okay, I'm just gonna stop myself, figure it out, figure it out fresh. At this point, I'm like kind of just trying to figure out the direction myself. I'm not even really using the nav ball, which probably isn't a, well, I guess I probably should. Yeah, I'll just use the nav ball. For now, once I get closer, I'll just kind of wing it. Let's see if I can flip around, retrograde. Oh man, darn it. This is very challenging. I probably could have done something if I hadn't just screwed up there, but oh well.
see if I can get myself back on track here. Okay, well, good thing is, I've kind of positioned myself in the place I wanted to be to dock myself with the uh, little port opposite of the two smaller capsules. And as you can see, one of those dishes is kind of slanted the wrong way. I'm going to see if I'm probably going to fix that later on. Just haven't gotten around to it, I guess. It's not a big deal, just an aesthetic thing. Yes, I'm gonna set that uh, port, the actual port that I'm going for as a target, so now I can sort of, I'm probably gonna, I'm not gonna really use my engine too much anymore, my main engine, because I'm too close and I'm just going to use the RCS thrusters. Pressing uh, N when you're in stage mode, N and H on the keyboard will allow you to just go forward or backwards, I guess, with the RCS thrusters. So that's what I'm doing right now. Once I get closer here, I'm going to sort of slow down a little bit and uh, direction myself properly and I'm going to go into docking mode, which I know how to use, sort of, but I don't fully understand, like I've mentioned like five times already. But we'll see if I can, <clears throat> we'll see if I can figure this out. Docking mode essentially gives you a whole new set of uh, axes that your RCS thrusters act upon, and it's Basically, once you get your nose or your port pointed in the same direction as the port you're trying to dock with, you're going to want to switch to docking mode, and then it allows you to sort of transition or like translate yourself left and right, up and down. Well, I don't even know. I'm, I'll bet, I mean, I could be wrong, but. It's possible I'm just completely doing this wrong anyway. And, but whatever I'm doing seems to work. So now I'm in docking mode and I'm going to see if, whoops. I'm gonna see if I can get my bearings here. So you can see I've pretty much got my uh, port aligned with the port of the station. So now I'm just translating myself downwards and See if I can. Uh, see if I can null out myself. There we go. It's the right button. Okay, now it's it's not vertically, at least relative to the port. Uh, vertically, or was anyway, for the most part, I am aligned. Now I'm going to horizontally shift myself over. Okay, I kind of got focused there and just forgot to talk. This this uh, stage of the docking process is, in my opinion, the trickiest, and this is what took me 
lots of time to figure out. Because the other stuff, if you know how to do it, you know, getting in yourself into orbit, below, all that, getting an intersect, if you know how to do all that, it's really not hard to execute. It doesn't take much skill, you just have to have the knowledge to do so. Uh, the knowledge to just get into orbits. But this, on the other hand, just takes a lot of skill and focus. And really practice, essentially. So now I'm getting very close. And I've opened up my protector. And I'm not perfectly aligned here, but fortunately, these ports have magnetism that kind of is, it's, well, it's really helpful. It kind of locks you into place onto the, uh, whatever you're docking with. If you're, you don't really have to be perfect with it. If you get close to it, it'll just kind of suck you in with magnets and you'll be locked in place. So that's what I'm, I'm not perfectly aligned, but I think I'm thinking it's close enough, so I'm going to count on that magnetism to line me up. Whoops! I'm starting to, I'm already losing my bearings here. Oh, I need to go. There we go. Okay, let's move in on the port here. And see what happens. Oh, getting close. Come on, magnetism. Take me in. I'm getting closer. Almost there. Almost there. I'm pretty much relying on magnetism at this point. Oh, there we go. You can see it kind of pulled me in. I'm not locking in though. It's got a. Maybe if I turn off. If I turn off SAS. Yeah, that, that helped. RCS off. There we go. Now it's pulling me in. And boom, we are in. We have successfully docked. We now have a returnable capsule that can take our Kerbals back to Earth because they have been up there for too long and in reality they probably would have starved or like suffocated, or not suffocated, but well, yeah, essentially suffocated on their own. See, uh, carbon di- car ah, God carbon dioxide anyway or whatever the heck Kerbals breathe who knows maybe they don't breathe well oh, that doesn't make sense never mind okay so we're docked I'm gonna warp around the daytime we can get a good look here uh, that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video I'm not gonna actually switch around the men yet and uh, try to get back to earth which I mean, I don't see how that's very hard. Just burn, retrograde, and then you fall back. Not too difficult. By the way, I, I am not, as you probably could tell, I'm not using any modifications whatsoever. I'm not using MechJab, which if I had, I probably would have used it, but I don't have it. Maybe I'll get it later. But uh, I'm not using any of that stuff. This is just plain old old-fashioned docking they, uh, yeah like I said before not the greatest space station and actually on that bigger capsule with my with the main bulk of my uh, solar dishes or solar panels I mean uh, two of them got knocked off during launch and I didn't because I didn't extend the panels until I docked I didn't realize it until I actually was docked and at that point I was just like you know, I, that was my second docking, and I was just kind of, you know, screw it, whatever. Maybe I'll fix it later, but for now, not a big deal. Looks a little funny, but it's perfectly functional. Before, I had these positioned a certain way, and they're not facing that way. Let me see if I can... Nah, I don't need to do that. It's going to be too tricky. We could worry about it later. Well, 
Well, plus I'm in docking mode, that's why it's not working. And well, I'll just load back to that quick save I just did. Okay, so we have completed our mission. We have docked a returnable manned capsule with a engine that will help us fly back to our Kerbal International International Space Station, or KISS for short. And um, that is pretty much the end of our first uh, Kerbal Space Program. So thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share. You know the drill. Um, uh, keep in touch with my channel, and I'll probably be posting more Let's Play series and other stuff, maybe a tutorial if you guys comment that you would like that. And also on my channel you can find other Kerbal Space Program uh, such So thanks again for watching, and hope you've enjoyed episode one of our KSP Let's Play series.